Welcome to class. So it's 12 o'clock noon on uh, Thursday, November 18th. I really hope you're not on campus right now. Um, evidently, there's some stuff going on, and I haven't gotten a notification that it's all clear. So um, stay away from campus. OK, so I, I briefly considered doing two sections today, and then, you know, we just don't need to be in a rush. So I'm only going to do one. Then we'll have class again next Tuesday. Uh, the 23rd, same way by Zoom. Let's check out today's lesson. Uh, I'm going to make this go away so I don't see myself. I don't like seeing myself. <clears throat> Section 8.4, probability and counting techniques. So now what we're going to do is just count things. And we know how to count because we have permutations, we have combinations, and they're going to help us out quite a bit. Uh, remember, it's in order to find a probability, it's the number of favorable outcomes, so the number of outcomes that you want to happen, divided by the total number of outcomes, so all the good ones and the ones you don't want to happen. And uh, I thought we would just do every problem. Is that cool? We got one, two, three, four, and five are similar. Um, but we're going to do them both. Six, and then number seven, I took off the assignment because, uh, uh, that's, that's it. That's my whole comment on number seven. Let's look at number one. This question has several parts that must be completed sequentially. You know how this goes. The dogs of the Dow are the stocks listed on the Dow with the highest dividend yield. All right, so this is how much they, they pay their uh, stockholders. The following shows the top 10 stocks of the dogs of the Dow list for 2015. So we're looking at six years ago, but based on the performance of the preceding year. So this is based, this is dogs of the Dow for 2015 it was based on what they did in 2014. Now our ultimate question is this. If you select two of these stocks at random, what is the probability that both the stocks in your selection has yields of 3.5% or more? In order to solve this, we're going to go step by step. Here we go. OK. So we're given a, a table. Yep. We're asked to calculate probability if we select two or more at random, both will have 3.5 or higher. Since we're selecting stocks at random, we're looking at our probability. Everything's equally likely. The notation N of S stands for the total number of outcomes in the sample space using combinations, right, because it doesn't matter how we get which order, we can calculate N of S by finding the number of ways we could select two stocks from 10 without replacement. So we're not putting them back in. We can't get Pfizer twice. And I'm guessing that this Pfizer's paying off a lot higher now than it did uh, in 2014, I'm just saying. So the number in the sample space is 10 choose two. All right, so we, all the ways that we could choose two different stocks. Now, how do we do this? Let's bring up our paper. Uh, I'm gonna always do it by hand. You can do it by calculator, but C of 10 comma two is 10 factorial over two factorial, 10 minus two factorial. So that's 10 times nine times eight factorial. And I stopped there because I'll have that here. Because now we can cross out the eights. 10 times 9 is a 90. 90 divided by 2 is 45. So 45 is the number that we will want to put. Uh, I know some of you don't write quite as fast as I do, because really, who does? All right. You don't know what I'm going to say until I say it. So I do. OK, there we go. I'll keep my eye on the chat this time, I promise. I'm recording, right? Yeah, hit record. OK, so this will be 45. That way we can see our work at the same time. Fantastic. Now yours could be different, right? Are you looking at two stocks? Are you looking at three stocks? Probably two. I don't know. Next, we will find the number in the event, which is the number of ways we could select two stocks at random such that both stocks have yields of 3.5% or more. Here's our table back. Of these 10 stocks, 
how many of them have yields of 3.5% or more? One, two, three, four, five. Nope. So it looks like five of them have yields of 3.5% or more. Literally just count the percentage. We're not rounding it. Don't round it. The value given is the value you use. If something calls, uh, you know, as a bad example, if something costs $3.48, uh, you can give them three fifty, but they're going to want to give you two cents change. But it's pennies. A lot of people lose those, so it's not the same. Okay, that's it. Just count how many of these are above three point five percent, or whatever your percentage happens to be. Since there are only five stocks with yields of three point five percent or more, we must select our two stocks from among these five stocks. Using combinations, we can calculate the number in E by finding the number of ways we could select two from these five without replacement. So our next calculation is five comma two combination, five factorial over two factorial, five minus two factorial, five times four times three factorial, because this is three factorial, so we can use a little red here to cancel stuff out. And we get 20 divided by two, which is 10. So five stocks have yields of 3.5% or higher. We wanna choose two of those. There's 10 different ways we can do that. So each time, right, in step one, it tells you exactly what we're looking for in this parenthesis, and then we do the work to find it, and that's just counting. In step three, uh, it tells us right here what it is that we need in our numbers, select two from a list of five, and then we can calculate. All right. But now think about the numbers that we have. Um, the number in the event space is 10. It says so right here. We, we know that. We're going to substitute these values into the formula. The number of E in the event goes in the numerator because the denominator is our 45. But don't forget that 10 divided by 45 is 5 times 2 over 5 times 9. And so that's 2 ninths. And we have completed the master it. So it's really taking you step by step. And, and this is a great first problem because it's, oh, look, I could do this now and I don't have to see myself. Oh, I do have to see myself, that sucks, okay. Uh, it sets us up because all of these are going to be somewhat similar. We're going to look for the number in the sample space. Then we're going to look for the number in the event space. And then we're going to find the probability of the event. All right, so it's always step one, step two, and then put them together for step three. Um, not in this step-by-step -step world, but in a general problem, such as this one. Now let's make this big so we can see it all. <clears throat> the test has three parts. Part A consists of nine true false. Part B consists of five multiple choice with five choices each. Multiple choice out of five. And part C is to match five questions with five different answers one to one. So that's it. Right? I'm not writing down any math. I'm just kind of taking out of that first sentence. What can I distract, but extract, not distract? What can I extract and try to, uh, to, to get down to like, what is it I'm really looking for? So it has three parts. So you do part A, and then you do part B, and then you do part C. So we're going to be multiplying. Um, assuming that you make random guesses and filling in your answer sheet, 
what's the probability you will earn 100% on the test? Well, the number in the sample space, right? Always our first thing. When we're looking at part A, true, false, there are two options, either true or false. Ooh, look, it says seven now, I can look. All right, feel free to uh, thumbs up or thumbs down if I ask if you're doing okay. Not right now, um, but in a minute. All right, so there are two options and there are nine questions. And then there are five options for each question and there are five questions. And I'm gonna circle this number so we know exactly which five went where because it gets a little confusing. And then, ooh, matching. So each of these, right, we have, we have a little matching. So maybe A, B, C, D, E, and one, two, three, four, five. But notice once I choose one answer, so all right, that's one. Notice I have five options to choose for this one. But now I only have four options of where number two could go because I know I can't repeat an answer. Maybe it goes there, I don't know. Now I only have one, two, three options available here, and then two, and then one. And this happens to be five factorial. What? This is looking like a huge number. But don't worry, we're not there yet. We're still looking for probability. Probability is always a fraction. How many different answer keys are 100%? There's only one completely correct. Answer sheet. So the probability of our event E is one divided by two to the, well, that's hideous, it's not 29. One divided by two to the ninth times five to the fifth times five factorial. And it says leave your answer as a formula. This is the answer that we're going to put in. I promise. I promise that's going to be the form that we leave it in. You don't have to find this number. This number is crazy large. Like crazy, crazy large. So we'll leave it like this because it's easier to write and easier to keep track of. Bummer. Somebody left. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, this is 8.4. 8.4. Yeah, there's no sense in doing a private message because I'm recording and when I look at the chat, it's going to come up to everybody. So if you're going to private message it, save it till after I say that I stopped recording. Um, sorry, just just for just so you know. All right, so that's it. That's it, right? Part A and then part B and then part C. We did this earlier, with Professor Easy and Professor Tough and all of their exams and we could do part A and then B or C. And, but this one is we have three parts that we have to do. We take care of true false. We take care of multiple choice. Matching is going to be an X uh, a permutation. So a factorial number. All right. And there's always only one way to get a 100%. Um, check this out. Two to the ninth times five to the fifth. Nope. Two to the ninth times five to the fifth times five. I'm going to go to math over to probability down here and get my factorial. I'm sure that's here somewhere. I just don't know the quick button for it. Mm, nothing quick. Nothing quick. One, two, three, one, two, three. So if you if you have a, a final exam like this coming up, you're like, oh, that's no problem. Like nine true false, whatever. Five multiple choice, only five matching. You have a one out of 192 million chance of getting 100% on that. So if you are okay with a zero in your final, go ahead and don't study. But if you need a higher grade than that, you should study. Uh... Number four and five are similar, we'll get there in a minute. That, I can't believe I left that in there. The monkey at the typewriter. Suppose that a monkey, and I 
I'm picturing orangutan, not just a monkey, but an actual primate, not not some kind of just new world bonobo monkey type of way. I don't know. For me, I love orangutans. So your computer keyboard randomly strikes the 26 keys plus the space bar. All right, so it just randomly strikes these things, and taking off all the other buttons, I guess. Find the probability. So this tells us we have to have an answer that is a fraction between zero and one. That its first 24 characters, including spaces, will be beware the Ides of March. Uh, leave your answer as a formula. This is going to be another uh, big number. So. So we have 24 attempts, and there are 27 options for each attempt. There are 27 to the 24th power uh, different things this monkey could type by just randomly hitting the keyboard. So that's the number in our sample space. But only one of them will be exactly this. So the number in the event, one, only one sentence, only one 24 character output, exactly like this. All right, so if I change any, any letters, if I change any spaces, it won't be exactly like this. So my probability, one out of 27 to the power of 24. And we're going to need to leave it just like that in the formula. Leave your answer as a formula. So the 27 keys, um, I believe, I believe everybody's answered this one. Is, everybody's problem is the same. I don't remember though for sure. Okay. Lotteries in the New York State Daily Lottery game. I'm going to change up colors here just for a little, a little difference. A sequence of two digits in the range of zero to nine are selected at random. Random. So order doesn't matter. All right. So we have a two digit number. There are 10 digits. All right. One through nine plus zero makes 10. So I want them to be a probability. So I have a fraction. They're both different. So I have 10 options for this first one. And whatever digit that happens to be, I have nine options for the other one. This is just 90. Oh, that's a probability. That's not the problem. Oh my goodness, people. Let me do this right. Back up. I'm not going to edit the video. People need to know. Um, sequence of two digits. Here's what we know. The number in the sample space, selecting two digits. We know that uh, be 10 times 10. Oh, I, I can't find a good way of using combinations on this. That's 10 digits for the first one and 10 digits for the second one equals 100. But the event space is both are different. Well, now we have to take out all those repeats. We can add 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 4, 4, 4, whatever, right? So we have 10 repeats in here. But how we would calculate that is where I was originally going. 10, and then the second digit has to be different than the first. So this is nine. Put these ideas together, and our probability is 90 divided by 100 is 0 0.9. Let me do that again, because I had some misleading uh, statements at the beginning. Right? We're going to take this in order like we always do. 
first, what are we looking at? A daily lottery game, a sequence of two digits, and 10 digits are available. So the number of, in the sample space for selecting two digits, a two digit number is 10 options times 10 options, which is 100. But I want the specific situation where both of those are different. So now when we look at it, there are 10 numbers for the first one, but then only nine, because I don't want to repeat for my second one. So 10 times nine is 90, create our fraction, there we go. Number five, we're going to work a little harder on. Um, I guess this is no, it is not. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm just, I'm gonna just leave it right there. We'll leave this one on the page though. In a New York State uh, daily lottery game, a sequence of five digits in the range zero to nine. Number in the sample space, five digits. Uh, they all have ten options. Ten to the fifth power, which is a hundred thousand. It's a one with five zeros. Now, here's what we want. Four of the five digits are the same. Now, I can't figure out how to explain it using this dash system. So, here's how I'm going to explain it. The number in the event. All right. So, out of these ten digits. Right, four of the five are the same. We're going to take those 10 digits and choose two, right? Because maybe these four are all the same, or maybe these four are all the same, or these two and these, whatever. Out of the 10, we want two digits. One will be repeated and one won't. From those two numbers, we have five spaces that we need to put these two numbers. Because the other ones are guaranteed to go in the hole, whatever the, the repeating number happens to be. So this is 10 factorial over 2 factorial, 10 minus 2 factorial, times 5 factorial over 2 factorial, 5 minus 2 factorial. And I was thinking this sounded uh, familiar, but I, uh, that's just because I did the problems ahead of time today. I know I'm just as suppressed as you are. So the uh, C of 10 choose two, five times four times three factorial. This is two times one times three factorial. Let's throw down some red, eights cancel out, threes cancel out. Uh, this is 90 divided by 2 times 20 divided by 2, which is 45 times 10, which is 450. So our probability is a 450 over 100,000. And we're going to use the calculator on this. 450 divided by 100,000. 0.0045. All right, so we took the number in the sample space. We found the number in the event space. We have 10 digits, we want to use two. And then we have five spaces for which to put those two items. The rest are single choices, so it's times one. 450 over 100,000. We take a drink, let you write, let you translate that to your problems, because I know well, you're doing your problems at the same time. I get it. All right. Uh, how are we doing? All right, good, good, good. Can scroll now. So hopefully you're finished writing. Remember, 
this is being recorded and I swear it's being recorded and I'm going to get it posted today even. All right, number six. Uh, number six is kind of fun, uh, but not really, uh, but kind of. I mean, it depends on your idea of fun, I suppose. So a graph consists of a collection of nodes. This was actually what I was studying when I was in graduate school. Um, been a minute though. The dots in the figure are the nodes, all right? Uh, connected by edges are line segments. A move on a graph is a move from one node to another along a single edge. So it's like you're walking down a, a street. So that's one block, one block, one block, one block. Find the probability of going from start to finish in a sequence of two random moves in the graph shown. All directions are equally likely. So now from start, we have one, two, three, four different ways we can go. So four different ways, and two of those are in a good direction. Two of those get us closer to where we want to be. Now, if we happen to be over here, uh, we still have four different ways we could go, but only one of them is right. The same thing, whether we're over, where do I go? Start down here. If I'm over here, right, same idea, either this one means purple, or this one, right? So there's only one out of the four moves you can make from your second dot, only one of them will get you to the finish line. Out of the four moves from the second dot, only one gets you to the finish line. And so this is two out of 16, which is one. Eight. I don't know about you, but I just finished my homework in less than 30 minutes. Let's check these. You know how it goes sometimes, right? Oh, look, they give us choices. Don't worry, I'll come back to that one. I have two to the ninth, five to the fifth, five factorial. Two to the ninth, this one. Don't, don't freak out on me, just, just, just give me the answer. There we go, I right, good. A monkey at a typewriter. That's one divided by 27 to the power of 24. You can see earlier here, I tried to put one out of 90 when I was doing my lottery. Uh, let's make this one smaller. Why didn't you slam right? There we go. Boop, boop. There we go. Uh, I tried one out of 90 and that was just not right. But you can see here by my work, I just pointed at my screen like I would at the board or something. Uh, 0 0.9 is a much better answer. In number five, I got the answer of, I'm just curious, 450 divided by 100,000. Don't use commas. We can't have commas. Commas are too much. Or you can put the decimal point 0045. I just want to make sure the fraction works. Oh my goodness, we're at the end of the assignment already. From the start, there's four ways to go. Two of those lead you in good directions. Once you get to the second node, one of those four directions will be right. Two sixteenths. Two sixteenths is the same as one eighth. And I believe I got the first hundred on an assignment, and I just want to look at it. I want to look at this right here. Love it. Okay, that's that's it for the day. Um, I could do the next section, but I'd rather not. I'd rather let you all catch up. And uh, I mean, this isn't even due until the day before Thanksgiving, so you have six days to get it done. Uh, the one that we talked about next week, eight point five, will be our last lecture. And in that last lecture, oh look, I can scroll now. And in that last lecture, um, all we're going to do is look at 8.5. Um, <laughs> keep asking questions. We will be doing uh, class.
class lecture on Tuesday by Zoom again. Um, still dealing with a little bit of weakness. I don't. I know probably some of you have dealt with friend or family that has COVID. It's the exhaustion after the after it's all done that is really the hardest it seems. And uh, so with the dogs around, I just don't want my wife getting knocked over or anything. We'll see how we are on Tuesday, but we're going to do it via Zoom. I do already have those notes posted, though, the skeletal notes, the ones we're going to look at. And I did take a question off of this homework. It used to be seven problems, uh, but I checked. Number seven wasn't on the quiz, wasn't on an exam, and wasn't something that any of us wanted to deal with. So I deleted it. All right. Any questions for me? Oh, yes. Um, let me show you something while I have this live. Um, that's an excellent question, uh, Esther. I did that this morning, but very, very recently. Uh, let's take a look. Let's move this again. Nope, that's not the right button. Okay, so today, like literally this morning, not before today, this morning, I have class notes for 7.3, the recording I did last Thursday, nope, recording I did last Tuesday, so 7.3 and 7.4 are there, and then in week 13, because that's where they're listed, uh, Eight one and eight two notes and the lecture are here. This is the one that I pre-recorded. I just moved it into where we uh, where we normally find them instead of where I had it originally. So this is uh, the the link from YouTube. I updated it here, and then I put eight point three with the class notes and the class recording. I don't know first whatever. I look like a goober. I never know what's going to happen. Um, and then I'll be putting eight point four also. Um, I'll be putting it here in week 14. You'll be able to find it there. But I did, I did forget about that uh, until just this morning. I'm like, ah, I don't have anything up yet. So they are available. Anything else? Oh, you're welcome, by the way. If you are good to go, go. Be free. Have a great day. Um, be safe this weekend. There's some shenanigans going around a lot on around UTEP lately. So Remember to be kind to each other. We never know what anybody's going through. And uh, hopefully that kindness comes back to you as well. And don't do it for the karma. Do it because it's the right thing to do. Just, we gotta be nice. There's a, there's a lot of us and we, we gotta get along better. So I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, question or a wave? Bye. Um, we're gonna call that a wave. Bye, Paola. Have a great day, all. Um, feel free to log out. Stick around if you have questions.